Hello, today I'm going to be doing a review of the Mead DS2090 AT-TC. It's got a 90 millimeter aperture as well as a self-guided computer system which allows beginners to navigate the sky easily. This was my first telescope and I chose this one because of Mead's reputation as well as the size of the aperture. I was hoping that I could see more objects compared to other telescopes with uh, similar specs but with smaller aperture size. Now this telescope has a focal length of 800 millimeters and a, uh, an aperture diameter of 90 millimeters giving it a focal ratio of 8.8. .8. That would be considered a slow focal ratio which isn't a bad thing. It just means it's going to be more forgiving on eyepieces. Uh, conveniently they gave me, well the package came with five eyepieces. Now if I were to upgrade anything on this telescope, it would be the eyepieces. Because the provided eyepieces are um, what's called um, the MA series from Mead. These are the modified Acromats. They're not that bad. They're okay for beginners. But uh, I would suggest that you purchase Plossils. Uh, if you're want, gonna want to keep this telescope. One of my favorite features about this telescope is its go-to capability. It has a computer control system that allows me to select the object of my choice from this uh, keypad and it's going to slew to that, towards that object. But before I can do that in each session I would have to set it up first and uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do that. The kit comes with a compass and a level so there's a bubble in there somewhere so what you do is uh, you can put it here or you can put it in the tray but uh, what they recommend is that you put it in the eyepiece you put it in here get it level and you point the telescope to the north you put the keypad into the HB export and you turn it on. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. It says press zero to align. So I'm gonna align it, press zero. and I'm just gonna hit enter here. It's just instructing me to make sure it's level and then it's pointed north. Hit enter. Now it's swinging toward Arcturus. Now because I already programmed it so that it knows where I am, uh, it knows where Arcturus is in the general, well, the general direction of Arcturus. And then now that it's beeped like that, it means it's pointing to, it thinks it's pointing to Arcturus. But what I need to do is look into the eyepiece and try to center Arcturus using these keypad buttons. So I can hit left or right, up or down until it's centered and once it's centered I hit enter again it's going to select the next star for more accuracy I was trying to swing towards Vega and after that it says alignment successful now I can choose the mode I want by hitting mode I can select an object or let's see Enter. I can choose a solar system object Mercury I can choose oops Venus Mars or any solar system of any planet I can hit mode to go back I can choose a constellation, a deep sky object, 
a star, a satellite, or a user object which I can program. So I thought that was pretty cool. If you want to use a telescope manually, which is a lot more fun for me anyway, uh, you can also do that. So what you need to do is you make sure that your finder, this is the finder scope, is aligned with your telescope. So a good example would be you set it up outside and look for uh, a distant object such as um, the top of someone's roof. You point this at, make sure that there's a red dot in there, make sure that the red dot is pointed at the top of the roof. Look through your viewfinder, make sure that it's also pointing at the exact same point. There's an adjustment screw on the left side. After that, if you want to start looking at an object, I suggest you start off with a low power eyepiece such as the 25 millimeter. Put it inside the focuser, tighten up the screw, and adjust focus until you find just the right amount of focus you can go past focus when you reach focus and go a little bit past it until it becomes blurry again and then go back it's just so they get an, an idea of where the exact focus is now for this type of uh, focuser you're probably not gonna have fine adjustment once you get that you can hit the focuser lock screw here that way it's not gonna move and you will remain focused for uh, an extended period of time now when you're slewing it around make sure that these adjustment screws are loose this would be your adjustment for your altitude and down here is your azimuth so what can you expect to see through this telescope well to me I found that it was great on planets such as Jupiter uh, I saw Jupiter and four of its moons as well as Saturn I could see the uh, Cassini division and I also saw Venus as a bright white disk and Mars was hard to resolve it was a red brown star now for deep sky objects you're gonna have to accept its limitations you're gonna need to bring it to a really dark site in order to resolve these faint fuzzies one of the advantages of owning a small telescope is its portability in this case this mount and the telescope are both light, so it's easy for me to carry it around if I wanted to move to the backyard or if I want to lug it around in my car. But the problem is it just so happens to be its weakness because whenever you want to locate an object, you're going to have to touch the telescope, slew it around, adjust the focus, and in this case it takes 5 to 10 seconds for the vibrations to stop. One way to tell if the objective has multi-coating on it is if you take a look at it at a certain angle, you should be able to see a bluish or a purplish hue to it. Now that's not a bad thing because multi-coating actually reduces glare when you're looking at bright objects. And meat has been known to provide some good uh, optics. This one is no exception, but obviously I'd have to accept some, some of its limitations. Uh, for example, when I'm taking a look at uh, bright objects such as the moon, it does provide very good uh, contrast, but around the edges, I would see some chromatic aberrations. So to round up some of my dislikes about the telescope, the very first thing on my list would be the mount. The mount could be very flimsy. When you're setting the telescope to focus on an object or when you're adjusting for focus, it takes about five to 10 seconds for all of the vibrations to stop, especially at uh, very high magnifications. Sometimes the go-to capability isn't quite accurate. When you follow along the tour and it slows to the objects, even after careful calibration, the object isn't in the field of view. The focuser is made of plastic, so if you're planning on doing some astrophotography and you wanna attach a heavy camera to the focuser it might not be able to handle that weight overall i think this is a great telescope for beginners such as myself because it got me hooked into amateur astronomy and i wanted to learn more about it uh, things that i like about the telescope are its simple design uh, i like the build quality yes it's made mainly of plastic but it's not just cheap plastic it's very it's very hard plastic 
Uh, I also like how, uh, how light it is. I can easily fold the legs. I can disconnect the OTA and toss both into the back of my car and drive to a dark site. I also like how it has a 90 millimeter size aperture, which just gives it a little bit of an edge over telescopes with smaller aperture size. I also like how it has a go-to capability which allows me to spend more time observing than looking for things.